The 80s had some great horror movies. And horror movies always had a hunk or two to look at. In this week's video, I'm counting down my top 10 hunks from 80s horror movies. Follow the yellow brick room. Long before the vampires of Twilight made brooding vampires hot and sexy, the 80s horror movie Fright Night gave us Jerry Dandridge, portrayed by Chris Aranda. Hello, Charlie. This classic movie follows the story of a teenager who believes that his new neighbor is a vampire. He turns to his favorite horror actor in a television show to help him deal with the undead. Chris Aranda played the role of Jerry perfectly and had audiences swooning over his mysterious and dark demeanor. Mr. Vincent! What? Mr. Vincent, please, just listen to me for a second. No! Wait! Please! Mr. Vincent, wait! Fright Night was the second highest grossing horror picture of 1985 behind A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge, and the most commercially successful horror film of the 1985 summer season. And I'm pretty sure that Chris Randon was one of the reasons for the movie's success. Hello, everyone. <laughs> After being sent to the electric chair, a serial killer uses electricity to come back from the dead and go on a murdering rampage in this 1989 Wes Craven movie. The protagonist, Jonathan, is portrayed by the handsome Peter Burke, who started his acting career starring in smaller roles in such films like Never on a Tuesday and Miracle Mile before landing the lead role in his Wes Craven shocker, I mean horror. What's a real shocker though is that there are still people watching my videos without being subscribed to the channel. Now how will you know if I post new videos? Go on, click on that subscribe button, I know you want to. And also while you're at it, click on the notification bell. Despite the film receiving mixed reviews from critics upon its release, Night of the Demons went on to become a cult classic, especially during the Halloween season. Oh, mother! Hey, 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 hey. Come on, spill a bean, eh? Hey, hey. Everybody hide, quick. Get ready to light. The movie follows a group of high school students who throw a party in an abandoned funeral home on Halloween night. And of course, they accidentally summon a demon while attempting a seance. Will teenagers in horror movies never learn? Anyway. Billy Gallo is the reason why this film is on this week's list. I can do an entire video series about the legacy of Freddy Krueger and the Nightmare on Elm Street series, but this film is on this week's list for two reasons only. The second one we'll get into later in the list. The first being Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp, who looked very cute in his crop top, was selected for the part in Nightmare on Elm Street because Wes Craven's daughter said that he was dreaming and she threatened to run away from home if he wasn't cast in a movie. We're all thankful that Craven listened to his daughter. I don't think the film would have been the same without Johnny Depp in it, wearing his crop top. Did I mention he's wearing a crop top? Nightmare on Elm Street 4 was the first in a series to give Robert England toppling in the credits. And it was also the first in two Nightmare films to feature Danny Hessel. Alice, let's say that, uh, that this is real, right? Why, uh, why all of a sudden is this Freddy guy after you? A typical Jack and horror movie with his blonde hair and killer smile. <laughs> Thanks, Alice. The plot and Nightmare on Elm Street films never really mattered. It was all about Freddy Krueger and his sadistic games. But in this film, Danny Hessel was another reason to keep watching. And also hoping that he made it out alive in the end. In fact, he was never supposed to survive as the character of Dan had no name when the script was written, but they eventually decided just to name the character after Danny Hassel. And thankfully, his character returned for another installment the following year. Horror movies in the 80s was the gift that kept on giving, and Russell Todd was no exception. He was dreamy as hell, and kind of reminds me of Smallville's Tom Welling. He started his acting career with a small role in 1981's He Knows You're Alone, before getting cast in Friday the 13th Part 2 as Scott. He portrayed another character named Scott in the 1984 film Where the Boys Are, which I will be checking out in my Friday movie review. I think he's mostly remembered for his role in the 1986 film Chopping Mall, which tells the story of three high-tech security robots coming to life and killing teenage employees inside the shopping mall after dark. In my opinion, he checked off all the boxes to become a Hollywood hunk, but unfortunately he left acting behind in 1997. 
So can actor on this list to have a doppelganger? Is it just me or does Tom Matthews look a lot like Cole Hauser? The resemblance is uncanny. Tom Matthews is best known for his roles in the Friday the 13th Part 4 and Return of the Living Dead. The latter film was the one that introduced me to him. Matthews began his acting career in the early 1980s as a model and commercial actor, before getting small roles on soap operas like Falcon Crest and Dynasty. The sign says you are now leaving for a screen. Don't forget to buckle up. You are damn lucky, kid. With all the grief you've given me, you should be leaving wearing your balls as earrings. He's also the third actor to portray the same character in a Friday the 13th film. Tommy Jarvis was previously portrayed by Corey Feldman and John Shepard. Which one of the three actors portrayed Tommy the best in your opinion? Let me know in the comments. He made that real clear. Megan, Jason is out there. Jeff Goldblum made his acting debut as a home evading thug in the 1974 Charles Bronson film Death Wish, before gaining wider attention for his role in the 1978 film Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Uh, that they do and I just stick them together, but uh, none of them knows what the project really is. With well over 140 credits to his name, this handsome actor clocks in at well over 6 feet and he first caught my attention in the 1986 remake of The Fly, especially when he removed his shirt. I wouldn't necessarily say that this was the film that made me realize I like guys, but I had a few questions. He was questioning his questioning of his sexuality. Initially, Mel Gibson was considered for the role of Seth Brundle, but he turned it down and Jeff Golden was cast in the role instead. John Terleski, I hope I'm pronouncing that one correctly is best known for portraying Death Stalker in the 1987 film Stalker 2. And boy, he was a handsome Death Stalker. But this list is about horror movies, so we won't be checking out this Death Stalker film. Who am I kidding? Let's take a look at him in Death Stalker first. Which way, almighty oracle? Just look at him in Death Stalker. What's not to love? Back to the list of horror hunks. Michael said find out that you do this, I'm dead. He made his acting debut in the 1985 teen romantic comedy Secret Admirer. And though it was a small role, it would eventually lead to a bigger role in Chopping Mall. Sure. Hand me my badge, will you? And his role, in my opinion, is definitely a standout in the film, if not also in his acting career. Robert Russell made his film acting debut as Max in a 1985 hit comedy, Weird Science. Check it out. Yo! Check us out! And that same year he appeared in the gayest horror film of all time, according to many critics. He and Mark Patton became close friends while filming Freddy's Revenge. Something that made their on-screen chemistry so much more believable. Are they just friends in the film? Were they more than just friends in the film? Seriously losing it, bro. I'm scared, Grady. One can just dream about the two characters being lovers. Despite having more than 60 acting credits to his name, his role in Freddy's Revenge, especially the shirtless scene, in my opinion, was his best role. Do you agree with the entries on this list? Let me know in the comments if I skipped your favorite horror hunk. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to click like and subscribe so you can stay up to date as soon as I post new videos. For a similar video to this one, click on this link.